my heritage is Greek. All four of my grandparents were Greek. My mother's side of the family came from Asia Minor, so they were Byzantine Greeks. They were from Turkey. Actually, the story is more complicated than that, but that's about the gist of it. My, um, my father's side of the family originally were from Crete and they came from Athens. At the, at the level of my grandparents' generation, they were very poor, actually. They were smart, but they were poor. And what, uh, what year was that? Uh, so my grandfather, my father's father was born in 1897. My mother's father was born after the turn of the last century. And um, my, 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 um, my, my father's father was orphaned when he was a teenager. And my, uh, my mother's father was, um, was uh, uh, an economic migrant. He went from southern Greece to Turkey, you know, just before the First World War. Anyway, those guys were all very interesting. They made some money. They um, fought, saw fit to send their children abroad to be educated. So my parents came to the United States from Greece in the late 1950s. And uh, they both came to Ivy League schools. My father actually went to Princeton and studied physics. And he arrived just after Einstein had died. And his, uh, his uh, dissertation advisor was Wheeler, uh, his undergraduate thesis advisor. My mother came uh, to Vassar, and she studied uh, chemistry. And they met through the Greek community. And they both went to Yale for graduate school, my father in physics, in nuclear physics, my mother in physical chemistry. And um, I was born in New Haven. And so I come from a fairly academic background. That's why you have a, a good heart for physics. Yeah, good heart for physics, exactly. I come from, I know these people. And, uh, and my, and, uh, but actually they went back, neither of them ever practiced those professions, which is interesting. And my father and mother went back to Greece when I was a baby in 1965, approximately. I was a young kid, I was three. And, uh, and then they, uh, my father had to do his military service uh, because he had deferred, you know. And so he did his military service and then there was the, the junta, the coup d'etat in 1967 in Greece, so they couldn't return. They returned to the United States in 1968. And at that time, I didn't speak any uh, English. I just spoke Greek. The rest of my life has been spent here. We, I grew up in Washington, D.C. And then you know, I went to college in 1979. Um, I went to Yale, and uh, then I studied biology. And then from there, I went to Harvard Medical School in 1984, and I studied medicine and public health. And then from there, I went to the University of Pennsylvania in 1989. Is that right? Uh, 84, 89, yeah. And then I studied, I got my PhD in sociology, and I did my clinical training. And then in 1995, I went to the University of Chicago, and that's when we were talking earlier about how I was studying the widower effect and, uh, and so forth. So I'm One of the things I enjoy most in life is curiosity and the ability to satisfy my curiosity, to engage in some kind of discovery-based science is like one of the most thrilling feelings that I can have. And I think part of my spending so many years getting an education was the desire to know as much as I could about as many things as I could. Uh, and as you said at the beginning, I think that in some way, all that preparation was very valuable because now I'm spending my career at the intersection of the natural and the social sciences, right? That little part that's right between, you know, the, the overlap of the two. And so, you know, and, and I think that's, that's very gratifying to be in that spot for me and to have had those opportunities. So, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that, one things that one of the things that people don't understand is that um, a lot of the stories about science are true. You know, that like, that it's a collective enterprise and that people are each making contributions, that there is a cross-fertilization of ideas, that the best ideas typically emerge at the intersection of disciplines, that there's serendipity involved, like dumb luck. We didn't talk about this, but we stumbled on the Framingham data in a way we can discuss if you're interested, but it was, there was some serendipity and chance involved in our a discovery of the these paper records which hadn't been used for research purposes that we were able to computerize. So there's interdisciplinarity, there's serendipity, there's tenacity, there is like the thrill of discovery and of the chase, there's accumulation, there is like uh, the sense of collegiality that all there's competition, you're competing with other labs as well. I mean it's a very, it, at least my experience of the life in science has been, has been that it, it's almost followed the stereotype and 
and that, that's the, what I wanted for myself. You know, when I was uh, in college, that's what I, the kind of career that I had wanted. So I feel very fortunate to have had it, actually. Time never really on my side. Well, look what I find is only shadows in my mind.